Hey, it's Nathan. And I wanted to tell you more about Hasdorff Dimension today, or like in, in particular, like how we work with it or some tools that we use in order to estimate it. There's certain things about this definition that make it hard to calculate. So in particular, if you have to have a delta cover of A, um, well, then your cover elements, they don't have fixed size. They could be a varying size. So estimates can, be, can get weird there. And then the other thing is that you're doing this limit of an infimum of stuff. And it's always weird to wrap your head around things when you have multiple limits and supremums and infimums and limb soups and limps running around. The first place to start is to work with upper bounds. And in particular, uh, this is this is not super difficult. This is probably the easier thing to work with when you're doing estimates because uh, the following proposition or the following estimate method that I'm going to prove uh, just uses the fact that you're covering with finitely many things. Suppose A can be covered with n sub k sets of diameter at most delta sub k, where delta sub k goes to zero as k goes to infinity. Then the Hausdorff dimension is less than or equal to the limit inferior as k goes to infinity of log n sub k over negative log delta sub k. So the proof here doesn't use any like special measure theory things. It's really just about understanding what it means to have a delta cover and what the definition of Hausdorff dimension uh, what the pieces are of it. So this proof starts just by noting that n sub k and delta sub k define a delta sub k cover of A. So the delta kth s-dimensional Hausdorff outer measure of A, which is equal to that definition above, just without the limit as delta goes to zero, is going to be less than or equal to n sub k times delta sub k to the s. And this is because uh, the infimum over all delta covers is going to be less than the value that you get out for one particular delta cover. We can then go ahead and suppose that for some s, a positive real number, the s-dimensional Hausdorff measure of a is going to be greater than 1. Then, well, for k large enough, 1 is going to be less than the s-dimensional Hausdorff measure of a, which is going to be less than or equal to the delta kth s-dimensional Hausdorff outer measure of a. For, for k large enough as delta k goes to zero. And then from the thing that we said about the delta kth s-dimensional Hausdorff outer measure and this inequality we've derived, we can go ahead and say that one is less than or equal to n sub k times delta sub k to the s power. And then taking logarithms, this says that zero is less than log n sub k plus s log delta sub k, which implies that minus log n sub k over log delta sub k is greater than s. And the thing to note here is that for k large enough, because delta sub k goes to zero as k goes to infinity, delta sub k is gonna be less than one, which means that log delta sub k is going to be less than zero, hence the inequality sign flipping here. Then, since s doesn't depend on k, we can go ahead and take a limit inferior of both sides. The only change that this will make is that we'll have a limit inferior on the left and the inequality will go from a greater than to being a greater than or equal to. And so then that means that the Hausdorff dimension of A is going to be less than or equal to the limit inferior as k goes to infinity of minus log n sub k over log delta sub k. Because when you take those supremums over s's, the log ratio of those n, k, and delta k things do not depend on s. So we have upper bounds now, or we have a method for figuring out an upper bound for the Hausdorff dimension. The next thing to do is to show that there are methods for calculating lower bounds of Hausdorff dimension. And in general, this is usually harder because if you're looking at the definition of Hausdorff dimension, you're doing this limit of an inferior thing, and you're always making things as small as possible it's hard to think about finding something that is smaller than that quote unquote small as possible thing. The theorem that I'm gonna present here is going to be the mass distribution principle. There are other mass distribution methods for estimating Hausdorff dimension, but this one in particular gives a lower bound uh, and it just requires some comfort with measure theory. So 
Let mu be a measure supported on a subset of x with zero less than mu of a less than infinity, and suppose that for some s greater than zero, there exists a c greater than zero and epsilon greater than zero, such that the measure of u is less than or equal to c times the diameter of u to the s for every u subset of x, such that the diameter of u is less than epsilon. So if you can find sets within your metric space that are small enough, you can uh, get under the gauge function up to a constant by using the measure of that set, is what this says. So if you fit that condition, that is if you can find a finite measure that lets you underestimate the gauge function up to a constant multiple by that measure that you're working with, then what the theorem says is that the s-dimensional Hausdorff measure of a is going to be greater than or equal to mu of a over c. And by consequence, the s for the gauge function where the measure does this particular thing is going to be less than or equal to the actual Hausdorff dimension of a. So to go ahead and do this, we start the proof by taking any cover of a that fits the conditions. In this proof, I'm going to interchange delta and epsilon because there's in the statement of the theorem, the small thing is the epsilon. In Hausdorff dimension, the small stuff is the stuff that's in the delta cover. So I'll be using delta instead of epsilon here uh, for the condition. So if the u sub i's is a cover of a that fits the condition, then a by definition of a cover is a subset of the union of all of those u i's. Then from our measure that we've found, the condition on that, zero is gonna be less than strictly the measure of the whole set a which is then less than the measure of the union of that stuff that covers it because the covering is a superset, which is then less than or equal to the sum of all the measures of those open sets, which is then less than or equal to the sum of the measure of all of those UIs by countable subadditivity, And then that's gonna be less than or equal to C times the sum of the diameters of those U sub I cover elements to the S power as I ranges from one to infinity because of the condition put on the cover. If you go ahead and divide C from both sides, you get the measure of A over C is less than or equal to the sum that's associated to that gauge function. And noticing that, we can go ahead and take an infimum over covers. And since the left-hand side does not depend on the cover used, the infimum only pops up on the right-hand side. And it makes the less than a less than or equal to. And then further limiting this delta to zero, since again, the left-hand side does not depend on that delta, we'll get the s-dimensional Hausdorff measure of A is greater than or equal to the measure of A over C as desired. Now, since the measure of A is greater than zero and C is also greater than zero, we know that the measure of A over C is positive, and so we have an s-dimensional Hausdorff measure that evaluates to something that is greater than or equal to something that is strictly greater than zero. So we know that the s-dimensional Hausdorff measure for that particular s must either be infinity or some finite value between that thing greater than zero and infinity because of how the Hausdorff dimension does that jump thing. And hence, that means that the Hausdorff dimension of a is greater than or equal to s. Anyhow, that's all for this one. I might revisit Hausdorff dimension at some point in the future in terms of like techniques used to estimate it. I'm going to do next time's video is going to also going to be Hausdorff dimension and flavor too. Um, but after that, I'm going to talk about some of my research style stuff um, in a more intuitive way. So uh, yes, if you enjoy this math stuff and want to see more of the math things that I put on the internet or want to hear about how math academia stuff is going for me, I put that all on this channel. Uh, so you can subscribe for that. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and you can comment things down below if you uh, have corrections, comments, concerns, or just things that you want me to cover in the future. I appreciate it. Um, but anyway, yep, that's it. As always, I am Nathan. This one was Chalk and I will see you next time.